Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Lignancer's Sword and Buckler play number 5. And we're going to be applying it to Sword and Shield. The reason why we're doing this is because we don't have any medieval manuscripts that show us how to fight with Sword and Shield. So we're looking at the Sword and Buckler plays and the German Longsword um, and trying to piece things together. Uh, the nice thing about number 4, which I already, already covered, and number 5, which I'm covering now, is that it, I don't need to modify the play at all in order to make it work with a full size shield. So, so it works really well. Okay. So the uh, the play starts off with a plunging stroke, this, which is a strut how. Okay, there, and then you follow that up with a thrust, and then make a middle how to the leg. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the strut how for a second, because there's two ways to execute that that strut how. Um, you know, one way is the way I just did it, where you're turning it over like this, right? In the SCA, that's called a scorpion wrap, right? So the sword comes in, turns over that way. The other way is it comes in and it turns over that way, okay? So as you can see, so one way it's like this. The other way it comes in like that. Either way, it's on its back edge and it is plunging, okay? Uh, the main difference is that you know, it is in which cut we use is what shot is it going to set us up for? Okay, um, if I do the um, the struts how like this, that's going to set me up for a really easy middle how on the right side to that leg. Okay, because naturally from here, it's really efficient to go there. That's a one beat. You know, to go to the other side, you know, basically I got to bring my hand in like this and cut there. Okay. So, so doing the struts how like this and that scorpion style wrap is going to set up a really easy middle how to the leg. If I do the struts how the other way, right, where I'm going like this and turning over the blade on that side, what that does is it sets up the middle how on the other side, okay, because that's really efficient. From there, it's really efficient to go to there. To go to there, to that leg, I basically need to reset completely, okay. so. So the difference is that to go from there to there is one beat. You know, to go from there to there is one beat. To try and do the opposite, like to go from there to that leg, you know, that's basically two beats. Okay. Uh, the same thing if I'm here to try, you know, I have to bring my hand in. That's two beats. Um, and uh, if I'm here and I'm trying to go to that leg over there, I pretty much got to reset. And get to that leg. So, so how we execute these struts, how is going to dictate which leg we want to attack or which leg we can attack more quickly. In this particular play, uh, uh, Lignature specifically tells us that we're going to be attacking the right leg. Okay, that's where that's where we're going to end up. So for that reason, okay, I'm going to execute my struts how uh, as a scorpion wrap up here, right? I'm going to basically, I'm going to wind up from back here, probably start from out of measure, come in, make that cut. Then he says to follow up with a thrust, okay? And then I'm going to step to the side just a little bit and make that middle how to the leg, okay? Uh, we could, um, you know, we could switch this up a little bit so that we end up on the other side. If we wanted to do that, I would use the other struts out where basically I'm, I'm attacking with my hands like this. Follow up with a thrust like that, and then make the middle how to that side. But like I said, in this play, he wants us on the right side. Um, you know, like I said in earlier videos, he's basically um, giving his student students a drill pattern to to practice. I, I do not believe that he meant for his students to use, you know, um, these strikes only in this specific uh, uh, sequence only. Uh, he just, you know, he was trying to teach them. Uh, a, a, a particular strategy. So the strategy being taught here is to attack high, so then you can, you know, is to threaten high, so you can then attack low. So that, that's the important thing to to get out of this. Okay. So we're coming up uh, with that strut high strut how thrust, and then cut to that leg. With this type of a shield, uh, because of that corner, um, basically with a slight step to the side. I can get around that corner. Uh, if I, I can change this to a winker how, right? If I change that to a winker how, 
which basically turns over to the back edge, okay, uh, that would even give me a little bit more, um, a little bit more reach behind the shield. So that's a that's an, a a good possible substitute. Uh, and all it is is this versus that. Right? You can see how the angle of my blade changes as I as I turn over my thumb. And I, when I'm leading with the thumb, you can see how it, it points in like that. Okay. Um, the the disadvantage of using that back edge is that the sword needs to travel a little bit further because basically when I'm using the true cut, you know, basically it stops there. Whereas with the with with the false edge, it usually the tip has to go a little bit further. I mean, it's not that much of a difference, but the the you know shots that typically uh, you know wrap around typically have to travel a little bit longer, and and typically give uh, people a little bit more time to see them coming. Very small difference, but there but there is a perceptible uh, delay. Uh, but anyway, going back to talking about number five, the the important thing to get out of this is the strategy. And the strategy is uh, threaten high so that you can attack low. Um, if this were a scutum, right, which was square over here, or an oval shield, um, I probably, I may not be able to just step around that corner, in which case I would be depending on this person to, to really w raise that shield up, which is entirely possible. Because basically what you're doing is you're doing two shots, two you're throwing two shots back to back up high. The first one that comes in, that first stretch out, is going to cause the person to bring their guard up. Then you're going to follow up again with that high thrust, and the person going to be like, "Whoa, this guy's got another high shot up here." Um, and without realizing it, with each block, they're bringing their shield up a little bit higher, which makes it possible where even if this was an oval shield or or a scutum, you know, they might raise it high enough so I can just make a straight middle how and you know and basically if this shield goes up six inches that would go straight into their leg okay so so that's um uh, ligniser's uh sword and buckler play number five applied to the to a full size shield um i hope you enjoyed it and if you got any questions or comments please post them um if uh if you're not a member please subscribe i look forward to seeing you guys next time